globally, we are uh, seeing a decline in reported cases in uh, majority of countries and the short surge that has happened after the Omicron surge in some European countries is declining. So we see a decline in reported cases right now in the UK, in Germany, in France. Uh, on the long run, we believe that uh, number of cases will keep declining all the way till next winter in the northern hemisphere. Uh, the situation we are, we are monitoring right now closely is what's happening in China. We believe the strict measures and the lockdown in China have been successful so far, so far in containing the spread of the virus, but Omicron being extremely uh, contagious and spreads much faster than any previous variant we have encountered. We don't believe that China could contain the spread of Omicron for a long time. So we're expecting a rise of uh, infections, uh, reported cases, hospitalization and deaths in China if these measures that are in place right now are not successful in containing the spread of the virus. And the reason we believe that for China, if you look at the measures that China put in place, they were so effective in preventing infection. So right now in China, about 2% of the public has been infected by COVID-19 since the beginning of COVID-19, compared to 76% of us here in the United States have been infected. So we have more immunity than people in China. We have, of course, better vaccines with mRNA here in China. And we have higher vaccination rate, especially among the elderly population, not for the general population, for the elderly population in the United States, we have a higher vaccination uh, coverage here in the U.S. So when you put all of these together, about in the United States, we have about 73% of the public is immune uh, from Omicron compared to 32% in China. So any outbreak in China right now, simply because there are about 70% of the public in China, the people in China are susceptible to Omicron, we expect a rapid surge of cases similar to what we have seen in Hong Kong and in other countries as well. More countries are relaxing their mandates right now. For example, Australia and New Zealand opened their borders to each other and travel is allowed right now. This could have an impact on uh, reported cases as people are traveling and feel they are free to travel right now. Mask wearing is the lowest since we started reporting on mask wearing and since IHME started promoting mask wearing and providing scenarios how effective masks are in preventing mortality. So we're at less than 25% right now when it comes to mask wearing. It varies by countries, but mask wearing has dropped a lot because many countries relax their mandates when it comes to mask wearing, especially in Europe. Testing is declining in many countries. Uh, for example, in the UK, they're not paying anymore for testing. So we're seeing a decline in testing and that will impact our ability to track the epidemic or the pandemic uh, in, in many countries and many locations. And some countries have decided and states have decided to release data on a weekly basis, not on a daily basis. So the quality of data and the timeliness of data has changed and that will impact our ability to track not only us, but other groups who are doing similar projections, our ability to track the pandemic moving forward. Globally, uh, there is a need to secure more antiviral medication and make sure that are available to every country out there to save lives and to prevent overwhelming the hospitals and protect the medical system. Of course, in countries where we'll see a surge of cases, uh, recommending people to wear a mask and uh, observe physical distance will be important. And in many countries in the world, it's very important to encourage the public to receive the vaccines and get the vaccines especially those who are not vaccinated and those who have uh, who are immunocompromised and have health conditions. Our data right now show that a small percentage of people globally uh, who want to get a vaccine are willing to take the vaccine have not been able to receive the vaccine. Majority are in Africa. Therefore, it's very important to share vaccines with country where people are willing to take the vaccine and they're waiting to get their vaccine. This, this is the only way for all of us to save lives stop the spread of the virus, and of course, we're not safe until all of us are safe. In the US, we are seeing a slight rise in reported cases in some states, but we don't expect a surge similar to what we have seen in some European countries here in the US, simply because in the United States, we have more immunity due to higher rates of previous infections in the country. 
Uh, BA2 right now is the main circulating variant here in the United States. About 86% of the variants that are circulating in the U.S. are uh, BA2. But because of uh, previous infections in the U.S. and our immunity, we don't expect a surge similar to what we have seen in Europe. The extension of the airline mask mandate in public transportation at the federal level and in airplanes will help a lot, especially right now with spring break vacations and people are traveling. Many families are traveling for the first time with their children right now since the start of the pandemic. So one would expect with the increased mobility and the fact that mask wearing is less than 25% in the US, that we'll see a slight increase in reported cases in the United States. We still believe that the pandemic phase of COVID-19 is over simply because we have higher infections here in the United States and hence higher immunity. We are uh, improving our vaccine and we sh soon should be able to have uh, vaccines that are designed for the new variants and the vaccines that we have right now are highly effective, but uh, we need to remember they were designed for the Wuhan variant. And of course, we have antiviral medications that will save lives and will prevent hospitalization. And of course, if there is a uh, surge and from an escape variant, uh, we can always go back to physical distancing and mask mandates and ask the public to wear a uh, high quality mask and avoid large gathering. The recommendation in the United States to contain uh, the virus, uh, the epi uh, epidemic of this virus in, in the country remain the same. Secure antiviral medication, distribute them, make sure patient could access them in a uh, short time to save their lives and uh, prevent overwhelming our hospitals, maintain our surveillance system and also our genetic sequencing to know what variants are circulating in the U.S. and if there is a rise in cases where it's happening and among who, especially if they are vaccinated or not. So we can tell immediately and as soon as possible if the new variant is an escape variant and the vaccines are not as effective against it. And of course, for the public who are immunocompromised or have high risk factors, they need to remain more vigilant and wear a mask, especially if they are in uh, close uh, indoor settings with a large crowds. And all of us, if there is a surge and a new variant that's circulating, we also need to put our masks back and make sure we maintain a physical and safe distance in order to reduce the chances of uh, getting this virus. But in, uh, in the short term, the coming few months in the United States, IHME is projecting a decline after this tiny little surge, a decline of cases all the way till next winter, short of a new variant, of course, appearing. But we, project, we are projecting a decline in number of cases all the way till next winter.